I think Info Edge's uh, listing price it 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 was at at a ninety three percent premium, and uh, even the you know your uh, IPO was valued at what four eighty million, and you ended up at eight hundred million, which was a huge uh, pop sometime in uh, twenty ten. Now investors traditionally believe that you know an IPO pop is not such a great thing because you're leaving a lot of money at the table. So how do you really go about pricing an IPO? Is there a risk that you could underprice it, leaving you know a lot of money at the table? Because I remember ahead of the IPO, there was apprehension that perhaps you know this is too high a price. So Sanjeev and Deep, if both of you can weigh in here, this this is a very difficult thing to tackle. Yeah, Deep, you want to go first? Sanjeev, you can start, and maybe Deep can. Uh, okay. Add. So look, uh, it's a tough one because as a company as a company management as a founder as an entrepreneur this is probably the first time you're going public okay mm -hmm. uh, you, you've not been in another company as one public right now what you don't want is your ipo should fail so you will tend to be risk averse and you'll say you know i don't mind leaving some extra value on the table but i don't want the ipo to be undersubscribed okay now we were the first internet company to go public in india and we went on pre roadshow meetings to just suss out how people view our company. This is way before the, the IPO filing. And the feedback we got was people didn't really comprehend and they were looking at us with the same prism as they would look at IT services companies, which would have a lower multiple. So we prefer to be more conservative. And yes, did we leave too much value on the table? Uh, I, I think we did. Uh, did I feel bad about it? No, I felt great actually because the IPO succeeded. Uh, and uh, but this 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 pricing was vindicated because in the nadir of the global financial crisis in 2009-10, uh, we were still above IPO price. So uh, you know we were clear that we sh that nobody who buys shares from us should end up losing money. If you buy from the market and lose money, that's we can't help it. But if you buy from us, you should not lose money. That was something which I I felt that you know everybody who buys from us should make money. And there I think even in the nadir of the meltdown. Uh, we were above IPO price. Uh, you know, our share price went down 75% in 2009-10 uh, from 1400 to 376 or something. Uh, we were still above IPO price because 320. So I think it was fine. Deep? But, um, I, I think there was, uh, so at least in the US, I think uh, you can price up. I mean, I think here there's a range. There you can price up. So when you see your book at the end of the day and you're oversubscribed like 15x or something, uh, you have the full flexibility to price up. So our bankers came back to us when we were doing what's called allocation of the pot. And you're totally, totally exhausted because it's been two weeks on the road, starting from Hong Kong and going on Singapore, Hong Kong and going on all over the US, etc. But Anyway, you're doing what you're doing, and they're saying, hey, you can price it up. You can move it up to up, our IPO price was $14. And we could have moved it up, they said, even to the high teens. Uh, we were naive. So we also felt that, listen, let's not be greedy. They're the same investors who we're going to come to and pitch later because we got counsel also. And so we let it be. Uh, clearly, it would have made no difference. Uh, and uh, anyone who was selling secondary at that point of time, you know, could have could have enjoyed maybe 20 percent more. So, of course, there's a little bit of regret. But that being said, I like Sanjeev's philosophy and we kept it you know, pretty much the same that listen, at least people who are buying stock when the company is uh, issuing new stock uh, should not feel under the water. And therefore, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's really a relief because our stocks obviously have been up and down. And we've seen the whole thing right now. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's on a two year high. But the point is that it, it feels good when you can go back to your investors uh, and, and show them that uh, you have validated their trust in you. You've given them a return. Market buying and trading is is something totally different. So, so uh, yeah, I think the flexibility is there. You can definitely price it up. If I was to do it all over again, yeah, perhaps uh, we could have priced it up another 10, 15% after that. And nobody would have felt bad because the pop was 90 plus percent. So, I mean, right. even people, even people who came in, I mean, I think we ended the day at 27 bucks. Uh, so even if you came in at 16 bucks, you made a lot of money and probably that was the right thing to do. But 